C.S. Lewis once said, Pride leads to every other vice. It is the complete anti-God state of mind. Our Daily Bread Today's encouragement from the Our Daily Bread devotional was written by Tim Gustafson. He thinks he's really something. That was his friend's assessment of a fellow Christian they knew. They thought they saw in him a spirit of pride. They were saddened when they learned that he soon was caught up in some serious misdeeds. By elevating himself, he had found nothing but trouble. They realized that could happen to them as well. It can be easy to minimize the terrible sin of pride in our own hearts. The more we learn and the more success we enjoy, the more likely we are to think we're really something. Pride is at the core of our nature. In Scripture, Ezra is described as a teacher well-versed in the law of Moses. King Artaxerxes appointed him to lead an expedition of Hebrew exiles back to Jerusalem. Ezra could have been a prime candidate to succumb to the sin of pride, yet he didn't. Ezra didn't only know God's law, he lived it. Ezra 9 tells us that after his arrival in Jerusalem, Ezra learned that Jewish men had married women who served other gods, defying God's express directions. He tore his clothes in grief and prayed in heartfelt repentance. A higher purpose guided Ezra's knowledge and position, his love for God and for his people. Ezra prayed, Here we are before you in our guilt, though because of it not one of us can stand in your presence. Ezra understood the scope of their sins, but in humility he repented and trusted in the goodness of our forgiving God. Today's Our Daily Bread devotional scripture reading is from Ezra, chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. After these things had been done, the leaders came to me and said, The people of Israel, including the priests and the Levites, have not kept themselves separate from the neighboring peoples with their detestable practices, like those of the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, and Amorites. They have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and their sons, and have mingled the holy race with the peoples around them. And the leaders and officials have led the way in this unfaithfulness. When I heard this, I tore my tunic and cloak, pulled hair from my head and beard, and sat down appalled. Then everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel gathered around me because of this unfaithfulness of the exiles. And I sat there appalled, until the evening sacrifice. Then, at the evening sacrifice, I rose from my self-abasement, with my tunic and cloak torn, and fell on my knees with my hands spread out to the Lord my God, and prayed, I am too ashamed and disgraced, my God, to lift up my face to you, because our sins are higher than our heads, and our guilt has reached to the heavens. From the days of our ancestors until now, our guilt has been great. Because of our sins, we and our kings and our priests have been subjected to the sword and captivity, to pillage and humiliation at the hand of foreign kings, as it is today. But now, for a brief moment, the Lord our God has been gracious in leaving us a remnant and giving us a firm place in His sanctuary, and so our God gives light to our eyes and a little relief in our bondage. Though we are slaves— Our God has not forsaken us in our bondage. He has shown us kindness in the sight of the kings of Persia. He has granted us new life to rebuild the house of our God and repair its ruins. And he has given us a wall of protection in Judah and Jerusalem. That's today's scripture reading from Ezra chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. Let's pray. Lord, fill us with such a love for you that we think first of what will please you not ourselves. Free us from the subtle captivity of our own pride. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's encouragement was provided by Our Daily Bread Ministries.